Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we are just so glad to have you with us this morning. Today is the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. And St. Peter is, as you know, our patron saint. And today we remember their life, their witness, how they gave themselves wholeheartedly to Jesus and to the mission of Jesus to renew and reconcile all things to God in himself. Um, so um, wherever you're uh, coming from, uh, coming from to today, whether you're in New York, City. Um, I'm upstate in uh, here in New York. We're celebrating Martha's birthday tomorrow. Um, so Javi and I came up here. So we're, uh, we're out of the city today. But wherever it is that you are joining us from, um, we pray that God would bless you and encourage you and strengthen you today. And so um, let's join together in um, singing this great hymn, Be Thou My Vision, and fix our eyes on Jesus as we worship together this morning. Thanks to the Father, who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Love one another, for love is of God, and whoever loves is born of God and knows God. Spirit of God, search our hearts. Let us in silence remember our need for God's forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with, our whole, with, our, with all our heart. We have not loved others as Savior Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive your sins, strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Do you join me in praying the Jubilate? Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Let's pray together the Psalm appointed for today, Psalm 87. On the holy mountain stands the city he has founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than the dwelling of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of our God. I count Egypt and Babylon among those who know me. Behold, Philistia, Tyre, and Ethiopia. In Zion they were born. Of Zion it shall be said, everyone was born in her, and the Most High himself shall sustain her. The Lord will record as he enrolls the peoples. These also were born there. The singers and the dancers will say, all my fresh springs are in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we'll read Canticle 20, 21. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the king of glory, the eternal son of the father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. 
you overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to the glory everlasting. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Timothy. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they had finished breakfast, <clears throat> Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So when, um, when Jimmy and I were dating, he would tell me that he loved me. And somehow I just could not bring myself to say it back to him for like six months. So he would say, I love you. And I would be like, that's nice. Thanks. <laughs> like for months, like poor Jimmy, right? And somehow I just could not bring myself to say it. So for one thing, um, I wasn't sure that I loved him back. Like liking him was one thing, but loving him is like a whole other level. And secondly, I knew that if I were to say, I love you back to him, that something would then shift in our relationship. And I wasn't even entirely sure like what or how, but just intuitively, I knew that after all these months of it just being kind of one directional, um, I knew that to respond back would mean that something would be required of me and that it couldn't just be words. Because love calls forth a response from us and me declaring my love back to him would mean having to give myself to him in a new way. You know, heart, soul, mind, body, just all of myself. And I just wasn't sure that I was ready to do that yet. So in this gospel that Denise read for us in John 21, we get to be a fly on the wall in this very intimate exchange between Jesus and Peter. So this is one of Jesus's post-resurrection encounters with his disciples. And I just want you to imagine the scene with me. So here they are, they're, they're out on the beach and Jesus has cooked breakfast for them and they're eating. And, when, and then in this moment, Jesus turns to Peter and just says, Peter, do you love me? Just imagine all eyes on Peter. It's like awkward. And you can imagine the other disciples just being like, oh man, I'm so glad that he's not asking me right now. Because like, as you know, in Jesus's greatest moment of need as he was being falsely accused, tortured, killed at the hands of the state, that every single one of his disciples who swore that they would be with him to the death fled. They left him. And Jesus had told Peter that he was going to deny him three times before the cock crowed. And Peter swore that even if everyone else left him and deserted him, that he would not. And yet there he was in that moment, denying him, not once, not twice, but three times. The Gospel of Luke tells us that when the cock crowed, that Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And then it says that Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him and that he wept bitterly. I mean, can you imagine that look in that moment between Jesus and Peter? Can you imagine being Peter and those eyes gazing at you and how you must have felt just the shame and the humiliation and the regret that you would have felt. And now those eyes are on you again. And you know that Jesus gave himself 
on the cross to death and the grave, that he went through hell itself for love of you and for love of this world. You know that he loves you. He showed it to you on the cross. And now those eyes are on you and they're asking you this very pointed question. Do you love me, Peter? Imagine how you would feel. Do you love me, Nora? Do you love me, Jahida? Do you love me, Gregory? Like, what would you say in that moment? Like Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus says, feed my lambs. And then he asks him a second time, do you love me? And Peter answers the same way. And he responds, tend my sheep. And then he asks him the third time, do you love me? Like, what's happening here? Why does anyone ask another person, do you love me? It's because they want to know. They want to know, do you really love them? Like we were made to love and to be loved. Like from the moment we're born into the world, we are asking that question, do you love me? It's not a needy thing. It's just a human thing. It's what it means to be made in the image of God. You know, God wants to be loved too, you know. The last time that Jesus heard Peter's voice, Peter was denying him and saying, I don't know him. I don't know that man. I was not with him. And what we see here is that restoration of relationship between Jesus and Peter. And Jesus wants to know from Peter, Peter, where do we stand? You know that I love you. Do you love me? And that's awkward, right? For Jesus to put Peter on the spot like that. But to ask Peter that question was actually so loving because it's in the mutuality of love, not just love in one direction, but that mutuality of love that we grow up and mature into the people that God calls us to be. And so three times Peter denied him. And three times by Jesus asking him that question and putting the demand of love on him, he gave Peter another chance to respond in a way that both restored their relationship and restored Peter from being fearful Peter to loving Peter. And love calls forth that kind of response in us. And in so doing, it makes us into more of who we truly are. And to love Jesus is to love his sheep. Like that's how much Jesus loves his sheep. To love him is to love them. And that's hard. You know why? Because life is easier without sheep to have to worry about. You know, sheep are always portrayed as being like really cute and fuzzy. But you know what? Sheep are a pain in the behind. Like sheep wander off and get lost. Sheep are ornery. Sheep bite. I know I've been bitten by a few sheep in my life. And I would rather, in response to that question, if I love the Lord, I would rather say, you know, yes, Lord, you know that I love you, that Jesus would have said something like, well, if you love me, just go to church faithfully. You know, read your Bible, pray, you know, serve, try to be a good person. But no, he says, Peter, you know what it's like to be shepherded because I am the good shepherd and I've shepherded you all these years. I've shepherded you all of these years that you've been with me. And now it's time for you to go and become a shepherd. It's time for you to grow up in love. It's now time for you to go and look for that one sheep who is, lo who is lost. You know, it's time for you to step into the role, the one who tends the flock, the whole diverse ordinary flock of sheep to love them and to care for them and to feed him. Because to love me is to love like me. And Jesus saw Peter from the very beginning. He saw this rash, impetuous disciple, this, you know, put my foot in my mouth, Peter, this sheep who gave him such a headache. And when he looked at that Peter, he saw a shepherd. He saw the rock of the church. And even though he knew that one day Peter was going to deny him, 
he says to him, you know, that Peter who denied me, that fearful, cowardly Peter, that is not who you truly are. The Peter that you truly are is the rock on which I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The Peter that you truly are will stand up in Acts chapter two in the same streets that I was once dragged through to my death. You will stand up and be full of the Holy Spirit and bravely proclaim the good news that I've been risen from the dead and that nothing will ever be the same in our world again. The Peter that you truly are will bring the gospel to the non-Jews for the first time in Acts 10 to Cornelius and his household, breaking down those dividing walls of hostility that polarize one tribe from another. And you will go to the mat in Acts chapter 12 before the council in Jerusalem to say that those who've been on the outside, those who've been marginalized, that God has given them the gift of eternal life and the Holy Spirit, just like us. These are our brothers and sisters whom Jesus shed his blood and died for. He would go to the mat for them. And that was the key that opened the door so that the gospel went out into all the world. It's why you and I are here today in this moment worshiping together because, because Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know, we're turning a corner in our world right now. And there are times these days when I look back on these past three months and I just cannot believe what happened. You know, we have walked and we are still walking through the valley of the shadow of death. This is not over. We are in the middle of a revolution where America and the world is waking up finally to the sin of racism. And the world will never be the same. In the midst of all of this turmoil and the heavens and the earth being shaken, in the middle of all of that, Jesus is saying to us, do you love me and feed my sheep? Take care of my sheep. I am calling you to move from being a sheep to being a shepherd in a world that is full of chaos and division and fear and uncertainty and to lay down your life for them just like I did. And it is time for you to grow up and take responsibility for the well-being of this broken and hurting world I love, not to continue to add to the brokenness and the hurt by being divisive and polarizing yourselves, but rather to bring healing the way shepherds bring healing. And that begins with your response to Jesus's question, do you love me? Like some of us are really great at going out there and doing a lot of things, being active and you know, doing X, Y, and Z, and we avoid Jesus. We avoid that loving, penetrating gaze. And some of us are great at just sitting at the feet of Jesus. We love spending time with Jesus in prayer. And we avoid those ornery, difficult sheep, you know, that craziness, just because it's easier. But I'm gonna invite you now just to take a moment and to ask yourself, do I love Jesus? Actually, not just that. In some ways that's kind of easier. I want you to imagine right now, wherever you are, Jesus gazing at you. You know, if it helps, you can even close your eyes for a moment and imagine Jesus gazing at you and saying, Christine, Mario, Tim, Jen, Jenna, do you love me? Just to answer him as honestly as you can. I'm just going to give us just a few moments to imagine that and then imagine yourself responding to that question that Jesus asked you, is asking of you. I'm going to pray. Let's just take a few moments and do that now. Jesus, we come before you this morning and we see your face, we hear your voice, we see that loving, penetrating gaze 
And Lord, we don't want to turn our eyes away. We do want to turn our eyes away. And yet the truest, deepest parts of us, um, we don't want to turn our eyes away. But you look upon us and you love us so abundantly, so fully, so freely. And this morning that you ask us, do you love me? And so God, with all of your help and your grace and your courage, Lord, we say to you, yes, Lord, you know that we love you. And God, we pray, Lord, that these would not just be words that we speak, but that it would flow out of the action of our lives. God, as we break down dividing walls of hostility, as we extend our hand to our enemies, God, as we love and defend and speak out on and forgive and all the things, God, that you have done for us, Lord, that we desire to be those peacemakers and healers in our world. And so God, in this moment, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Send us out to be shepherds, God, in your world, to love the sheep that you love. And Lord, to so bring just the healing and the freedom and the flourishing, God, um, in this world that you so love. We commit ourselves to you, God. We pray these things, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you join me now as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, peace, with, you. With, you. peace be with you, friends. You can pass the peace in the live chat. Jimmy over here. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you, everyone. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you. All right, friends, it's good to have you with us this morning on this feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. Blessing friends. Um, we have just a few announcements. So one is we just wanna welcome all of you uh, to our worship service this morning, especially if you are new and joining us for the first time, we are really glad that you are here worshiping together with us. Um, and immediately following the service, uh, we're gonna have like, quote unquote, um, a little mini coffee hour on our live stream. So um, myself and Denise and Leisha, we're gonna stick around for a few minutes. We'd be happy to talk, to chat. Um, to chat with you. We've been calling this the St. Peter's view. <laughs> we haven't decided yet who's who's Whoopi and who's Joy and who's Megan McCain. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, we'll figure that out later. But um, join us and you can stick around if, you, if, um, if you're able to. Um, as I said, today, actually technically tomorrow is um, the feast day and whoops, I would think. And I uh, just wanted to show you. Um, so we're up here in the Adirondacks. And as you all know, um, because we're with Martha, Martha loves, uh, she has a special bond with St. Peter's, let's just say. So she made um, St. Peter this festive <laughs> outfit. Um, this little, this beautiful cape um, that also happens to <laughs> match a dress that she sewed for herself. So um, anyways, St. Peter is looking nice. Ooh, oh, nice and festive. <laughs> Um, he's just, he's going a little crazy. He's just throwing off his hat. He's really excited about tomorrow being his feast day. Um, so, you know, some of the fun things you can do 
Tomorrow, of course, obviously would remember that Peter is the rock of the church. Um, and he really did turn the key so that the gospel would go out into all the world. But Julia um, sent a, a fun uh, email around to the parents and said, hey, Peter was a fisherman. Why not make fish for dinner tomorrow night? You could do that. She's got a great bread recipe where you can turn it into a, the shape of a key. So if you go um, onto our website, um, you can click on where our St. Peter's Eaters cookbook is. And there's a document in there that's got a couple really good fish recipes. And then also the, the key bread uh, recipe as well. So we can celebrate that tomorrow. Um, next is, um, Mitch, if you could throw up that, uh, that image of the summer devotional. So um, last summer, before I even came to St. Peter's, um, I put together this summer daily office as a way for like the new members who were coming with me and the old members of St. Peter to be able to just pray together. And so I just pulled it out again to see that if it would be worth sharing again. And many of you were not with us at that time. So this is, um, it's just a, it's a prayer guide for July and August. Um, it's got um, daily prayers that you can pray every single day. And then it also has um, a scripture passage that um, has um, themes that I chose um, to lead you through the summer. But it's, um, it still works. It's still scripture. It's still prayer. And so um, you, I sent it out in our weekly email, but you can also download it from our, web, our website, stpeterschelsea.com. Uh, dot org and get a copy for yourself and it actually starts tomorrow so every week it starts on monday and then it ends on sunday you know i don't feel like you have to read every single passage but they're there for you just as a resource um the other thing that I will say is that the, um, our summer schedule, we're shifting things just a little bit. So this summer, um, so we have been doing morning and evening prayer on Zoom and other platforms. Um, so Tuesday and Friday, or, yeah, Tuesday and Friday morning prayer is going to stay the same as it has been. Um, we're moving Wednesday evening prayer to our Facebook page. Um, so just check us out there, but uh, we'll be on there every Wednesday night uh, during July and August. Um, we are taking a break from Thursday night Compline at nine o'clock. So we're just gonna take a break from that for a while. And then on Thursday nights, um, the Bible study has now become hangout and prayer. So summertime, we're just chilling out a little bit. Um, so it'll just be a time to catch up with each other and to pray for each other. And you can um, RSVP to Michelle. Um, and all this information is also on our website too. Um, finally, um, just as an update, um, we are doing these listen storytelling groups around our, our racial histories. And um, we've got um, 30 people signed up, so, which is awesome. So that's gonna be starting this week. And so if you um, have signed up, um, you'll be hearing before the end of this week, um, what group you'll be in, but really just be praying for that time. I think it's so important to really um, just like listen to our own stories as we're listening to the story of our world. Um, and so it'll be a, a really rich time for us to continue getting to know each other um, this summer. So I think that's all. And so would you join me now in singing the doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. 
Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, look favorably, we pray, upon our parish community at St. Peter's Chelsea. Strengthen us to boldly confess you as our Savior, the Christ, just as Peter did so many years ago. Send us out to pass on the good news in both word and deed to neighbors near and far. Open our hearts and eventually our doors to those seeking sustenance of body, soul, and spirit. Make us the heart that beats in the city for the love of you and all that you have created. We ask all this in the name of the one holy triune God. Amen. Be present, Spirit of God, within us, your dwelling place and home, that this house may be one where all darkness is penetrated by your light, all troubles calmed by your peace, all evil redeemed by your love, all pain transformed in your suffering, and all dying glorified in your risen life. Amen. Amen. We're going to move into a time of intercessions and thanksgiving for our world, for our loved ones, and I will try to read as many as I can before we, um, as we, as we pray. Um, and so let's join our hearts together um, in praying on behalf of our world. God, we come before you now just praying for your Holy Spirit to break down all the dividing walls of hostility in our society, in your church. We pray, would you come, God, come, Holy Spirit, fill us and unify us, we pray. Lord, we want to pray for Methias in Zimbabwe and Tony in Detroit. Bless them today. We pray for Melissa's father and for their whole Morgan Weck family, Lord, for your grace and comfort to surround them. God, we give you thanks, Lord, um, for the healthy delivery of Simeon, a Andrew and Eliana's um, new son. God, we praise you for the gift of life, Lord, and just pray for grace in that new family. Lord, we want to give thanks for um, the Morgan Wex cousin, Carol, who's been a huge and constant support in caring for their father. Thank you, Lord, for her being an angel to them in this season. God, we pray for your blessing over families, Lord, who now have to figure out a summer camp for kids, Lord, after an intense school year. And God, we pray for just creativity, for community, for connection, for imagination, for just surprising resources, Lord, to come um, to families, Lord, in these next two months. And God, we praise you, Lord, for the kids who finished out a challenging year. God, thank you, Lord, for just their perseverance and their resilience, their adaptability, God, for their spirits and how they kept them up. Thank you for the parents, Lord, who jumped in and, um, and were such champs. God, we praise you for that. Lord, we want to give thanks for Ela, who graduated on Friday. And we pray a special prayer of blessing for all the 2020 graduates as they move into this new season of their lives, Lord. And may they flourish, God, um, as they just spread their wings and fly. God, we pray for your continual watchful care over Marta and over Farah's dad. May he feel the closeness of your presence. Well, Lord, we pray for Jenna's three cousins who've contracted um, the virus. And Lord, we pray, would you protect them, heal them fully and quickly. Lord, we pray for our brother Rich, and we thank you for him, and just the man of God you, you've created him to be. And we pray for his health, God. We pray for healing for him in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for just your spirit of shalom to, to give him peace in body, soul, mind, and spirit. Lord, we pray for the continued health of 
Barbara Mort in Marion in Florida where the COVID crisis is spiking. God, would you protect them, Lord, and strengthen them. We just always thank you, God, for your grace that is sufficient for us. We pray for your protection of, of Gregory's father, Lord, who's especially vulnerable to COVID. Lord, and as their family gathers next week, God, would you protect him, we pray in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for just the, the health of Barbara's family, Lord, and for the way that they can pull together during this time. Would you bless them today? We thank you for this community of St. Peter's and for Heavenly Rest and for all angels and these um, faith communities that you've you bound us together in a special way in this season. Would you bless all of these communities? And Lord, we pray your blessing on the summer's listen groups and pray that it would be a beautiful and a fruitful time, God, deepening our bonds with each other. And Lord, we pray may that be true, God, of our entire community. Lord, we pray that this would be true of your church at large. We pray that this would be true of our city and our world, that we would remember that we belong to each other that we love each other, God, that we've been called to um, tie our destinies together, God, in the season ahead. And Lord, that even as um, the prayers, um, whether they've been spoken or not spoken, God, we pray, God, in all these ways, Lord, would you um, gather up these prayer requests, Lord, into your very presence and heart, Lord, and we know that even now you respond to them. All these things, God, we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you join me now in praying this prayer of St. Christison? Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that where two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. We're gonna close out our service this morning with that great hymn, The Church's One Foundation.
Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen, friends. Well, blessings be with you. Um, we're glad that you could join us today. Um, blessings on the rest of your day. We're going to stick around for um, just a few more minutes to chat um, with you. But please, if you need to go, don't feel badly about leaving. Um, but would also love to hang out and talk with you too. So if you are taking off, we love you. We bless you. Happy Feast of St. Peter and the other guy. And, um, and uh, we will see you next week. All right. So, friends, how are we? Let's take a look at the chat here. So, welcome to the view. <laughs> the oh, same I like it. Yes, that's right. The show going, right? Yeah. That's Who's right. Meeting us today. Yeah. Oh. Good to have you all. I think Denise, are you are you muted? There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. I was waiting for you to make reference to the Feast of St. Peter and the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Paul's, Paul's great too, but come on. I mean, Peter is really, I mean, whoever says that like Paul's- It's all about St. Peter, right? It's all about St. Peter. That's right. That's right. St. Peter's view. Yes, that's right. We love St. Peter's view. Yeah. So how are we doing, everyone? How are you? How are you, doesn't, doesn't usually like Whoopi Goldberg like ask like how everybody's doing? How are you guys doing, Denise? Um, we're good. I'm good. Um, Ela, I think I, I mentioned in the comments, Ela graduated on Friday. So um, we're coming down from that fun spring. Yeah, milestones, you know. Big yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's a big deal. You're letting another one of your birds. Yeah, you know, like two age children now. That's something. I know. Halfway to an empty nest. I know. We're like two down, two to go. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what did you what did you do for graduation? We went to she had her graduation virtually like everyone else, but her school is an art school. So what was really fun was that, you know, these kind of theater artsy dancer majors um, were very um, it was a very performative um, virtual graduation. So it was lots of fun, lots of personality coming through that. So they did that. And then afterwards we went to the park across the street and took pictures um, in conservatory garden. Um, Ronnie and I got married there actually. Um, oh. So it was really nice to take pictures with her there. And then we came back and had her favorite dinner. Um, we had macaroni and cheese um, with hot dogs in it. Um, <laughs> Her favorite she's fancy. she's fancy she's fancy but that's what she wants <laughs> um, and buffalo wings and french uh, no onion rings and so that was her choice for dinner and we hung out on the terrace so it was just really sweet yeah and then we watched a movie yeah oh fun i love i love that that's the dinner that she wanted i love all of those things and you know i have a really good recipe from it um for it from rachel ray actually she does is she i think she calls it something mac and cheese with hot dogs dog doggy mac and cheese or something like that that's what she calls it but it's just mac macaroni and cheese with hot dogs in it and it's her favorite so i made it yeah yeah Lisa, you should add that to our saint peter's eaters Good, I could, right? It's, it's really yummy. It's really yummy. <laughs> Christopher says, to be young and no heartburn. Okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, for, I put a salad in that. I will say that I also served a salad with that. Yeah. <laughs> the mommy in me made me do that. <laughs> well, you know, you know, eating salad cancels out the hot dogs. It does, right? You know that. But <laughs> scientifically, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> a piece of the salad <laughs> all as well yeah <laughs> yeah so martha was asking if ela's college was going to be in person in september we're still we're hearing all of these um um getting information back from the universities now and so um we heard back from tufts and from adrian and they are there are plans to have you know physical presence on the campus um 
you yeah. can have, there's options. You can either take the, the semester off that you're willing, you know, there, that's an option for you to, you can come back for this hybrid moment of some classes in person and some online, or you can stay home and do it online. Um, but there is an option to go back. So we'll see. We haven't made a final family decision on that yet. Yeah. Okay. Right. Cool. I think some are doing that because my, my great niece is starting college in Gainesville okay. and um, she's in an arts program. And so everything is very hands on. It's, yeah. it's very, you know, she's going to be making things. And um, so they will, um, she's got an apartment there and she's going to be starting um, to attend on campus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they, they opened up, they're opening their rink for ELA school for her, the figure skating team. Um, they're opening the rink in July and, um, you know, they have to wear masks and all those things, but they're opening it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll see. But thank you all for the congratulations for her. It's a big deal. So, yay. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see. Oh, Elaine's asking what school she graduated from. She graduated from Repertory Company High School for Theater Arts, um, very small public school in the city. It's in Town Hall on 43rd Street, um, about, about 250 kids. Um, you audition to get in, theater yeah. production, all of that. Yeah. She's in that school. I didn't realize that. I know about that school. It's yeah. so funny. You go up this elevator. Yeah, and, you know it. Yeah. You know how I know it. I, it, it, I had... Um, a cousin of mine um, died a couple of years ago, and I was, for some reason, the keeper of his um, military uniforms. Okay. And we buried him in one set, but I had his whole other set. And I just couldn't just put it in the goodwill. I just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and my sister always tells me my biggest problem with in getting rid of things is that I, I care too much about the stuff and I want to do it the right way. I should just throw it in the garbage. I couldn't do it. And I, and if, I don't know how I got the idea. Maybe somebody probably suggested it to call schools that do plays and see if they need it in the costume department. And they were thrilled to get it. So I went there and brought it in person and got to go up that funky elevator and, and yeah, see. Yeah, 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 wow. It's, oh, oh, I'm sure cool. they really appreciated <laughs> um, three really big productions every year. So I'm sure at some point they have or will use it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Denise, Aaron Lee is asking about if your niece goes to University of Florida? That would be the one, yes. Yeah. Think, yeah. yeah. That would be the one, she's just, she's just starting. So um, she's going down in mid-August and she has a, an apartment with two other people who she's met by Zoom, but she likes them and they're all, um, my niece is adopted and she, um, her bloodline is from Dominican Republic. So she, tries to identify with that even though she has no basis for it because you know she's living in her white family you know so um and so she's gonna be and Tennessee has been a little rough for her because she's often been the only person of you know any pigment <laughs> at all in her school she's a, she's a person of pigment um <laughs> and you heard it first here <laughs> yeah. so She's so happy to be with these two, two other um, roommates are also uh, Dominican Republic. And uh, one of them doesn't even speak that much English, which should, might be nice because they could maybe help each other with, with some language skills. And it's a you know, nice setup. They all have their own bedroom, but they have communal space. So, um, so, she, so she's excited to meet them. And, and, they're, and not only that, but they're diverse. Uh, you know, one is gay, one is something else. I, you know, like, it's, it's just, just her. She's, you know, she's very happy. Yeah. To be her, her ilk, you know. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah, and she recently did a painting for me. So when I get that, it's probably waiting at in Manhattan. When I get back and get that, I'm going to post it on Facebook because oh. I had taken a photograph and she did a painting for me of the photograph. Oh, nice! And it was one that I took early on in the pandemic when I was coming home from a doctor's appointment and I was passing Bloomingdale's and it was a rainy morning and the streets were empty. And I took a picture and when I saw it, it was much more meaningful than what I intended because on the right side was a Banana Republic store, which we just were so Banana Republic at that time. You know, it looked like we were, <laughs> and no people on the street, but the mannequins in the store. Mm. There was so, there's so much to this, to this painting and she did it. And I saw a picture of it, but I can't wait to get it. And I'm going to post it on Facebook with the, hopefully I can figure this out with the original photograph. Oh, wow over to that then. Oh, nice to see you. Oh, that's amazing. Oh. 
I'm just always so amazed by artists. I know, yeah. we can't believe there's someone so artistic and talented in our family, and then we realize, well, <laughs> <laughs> we had to adopt outside to get that. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, Leisha's family is so, like, everyone is so artistic, I feel like, in your... Well, uh, we have a little bit of, we have a little bit of it, all of it, yeah. Uh, dancers, designers. Oh, yeah. Brand New City guy, which is Lee Chai. Like we have, he's, a, and I think Chyla has that too. She's like really kind of, like they just have this natural affinity for the sciences. My brothers are like that as well, like science and math. I did not get that. I'm on the artistic side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's interesting how that all works out. Yeah, yeah. That's really beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, do you guys have any questions for us? <laughs> I love your story, your personal story in your sermon about Jimmy and how you wouldn't tell him you loved him. Yes. Yes. Okay. He's still bitter. <laughs> I can imagine. Pray for heal we pray for healing for Jimmy. Yeah. But, but you're right. Once you utter those words, the train has left the station. Yeah, yeah, yeah for real. Yeah, but it's just that. Yeah, but he was so like, um, he's, he's like over here on the bed. He's so, um, he was just so like steady and persistent. And he just kept on telling me, I am the one. I am. He actually gave me this card one time. And all the card said was on the front was just, I am the one. I am the one. I am the one. <laughs> he basically brainwashed you is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. Eventually, she had the message. <laughs> yeah, you gotta warm me down. Yeah, but you know, some of it too is that, like, in um, it's like in, in Korean Christians, or like Korean Christians, as you've heard me say before, are a pretty intense group of people. And like, dating is like pre engagement, basically. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like a pretty intense thing. And so, it took me like a long while just even to like say yes to dating. Because so then from that point forward, like to say, like, I love you to somebody, I mean. Is dating like, well, assumed marriage, like? Yeah, yeah, at, at least like at that time, like in that era, it was, yeah, like it was, it, it was, it was like a pretty big deal. It's like Mary and Joseph betrothed, you know? <laughs> exactly, oh, right. yeah. yeah, so it was, it was, it was kind of a big deal. And I was like, when I was younger, I was like really afraid of like just commitment and I'm kind of a free spirit. So I like, I don't like the idea. I don't like being tied down. And so, yeah, so I just, I, I, all, all of that to say like, I love you to somebody just was like such a big deal for me. But um, Melissa's asking if Jimmy had to get my parents permission to date me. He, did, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I don't know, not, no, not to, not to date me, but to marry me, yes. And um, it was funny because, you know, my parents live in Korea. And um, at the time, Jimmy, you know, Jimmy had had this like high powered like banking job and he had, he had, he had quit. And, um, and so he was, there was a, there was like a season where he was like not working. And my dad came to the U.S. during that time. And he um, was going to be meeting Jimmy for the first time. And Jimmy was just like, dang it like the timing like he comes to the u.s when i'm not working i'm unemployed <laughs> but he won he won my dad over so now they love him they're like a man who like cooks for you and he cleans and he's supportive of you and ministry i don't hear him chopping anything in the background is he not making one <laughs> Making a salad today? I know. Normally, you do hear him chopping, right? And well, you know why? It's because we have Martha here. So now Martha is out oh. there. Yeah, yeah. Martha's the cook. The cook when the three of when we're all, we're all together. She's, she, Martha's become like a prairie woman since she's been upstate this she's entire like time. My dear woman, right? Yeah. She, they've like you know she's been sewing. You know, as you can. Yes. You know, <laughs> she's been sewing a lot, but she all, like she made a beautiful dress for herself out of this same fabric. Yeah, so she'll, she'll probably wear it tomorrow for St. Peter's Feast Day so they can be twins. Um, but, you know, she, they made their own butter um, wow. while they're up here. I mean, it's just incredible. It is. And what is, what is her birthday dinner request where she's making it for herself? <laughs> so so we're, actually, we're actually going out to eat tomorrow for her birthday, but she's an amazing baker too. So we're so basically she's baking her own birthday cake because me and Jimmy are not we're not really bakers. So she's making I think like an all it's like some kind of almond cake 
with like chocolate and raspberries. Oh yeah. my God. It's gonna be delicious. Yeah, it's gonna be delicious. Is this your first restaurant since the, the pandemic? Like, will this be your first entering into a restaurant? You said you're going out? Oh yeah, well, I think it's probably gonna be takeout. Yeah, it's probably gonna be takeout. So it's kind of like it's 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 this like kind of mac and cheese, burger and sandwich kind of a place. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm just looking here. Jahida was saying, oh, Ken says it um, that we love Jimmy too. Yeah, <laughs> he yes. feels he feels the love, Ken. <laughs> and yeah, St. Peter's is gonna need a trench coat for the fall for sure. Yes, he is gonna be styling for the fall. That would be cool, a trench coat. Look a little like Colombo or something. <laughs> yeah. like a little fedora. <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and it, going out to eat does sound so. It does sound so foreign. It was kind of crazy seeing all the restaurants in the city um, with just al fresco on the sidewalk. But you got to hand it to them; yeah. they're making it work. Yeah, yeah. I was at a restaurant the other night, um, and what they did. It was the first time I dined indoors. Mm -hmm. And the way they did it was um, they had they had white tablecloths and and they really basically just took reservations. But the way they did it to be clear was they had all white tablecloths and then every other table had a red tablecloth and those were not to be used. Oh. And it actually looked it, it made it, it instead of, you know, turning a table upside down or, you know, it just right. made the restaurant still look really nice. And it was one of their first nights open. And the, the waitress was just she was just so excited <laughs> you know <laughs> so excited and the manager came over you know for no you know so um people are so happy to to get back so i hope i hope we we, we keep yeah, this I hope this all works you know the next few weeks i guess we'll tell but we did so much you know worked so hard to to get to this point um yeah 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 i know i know it's true and i i have to tell you i totally agree with keeping the floridians out because yeah. Yeah. that could that could be bad that that could really um be bad in my building here in long beach we have a lot of snowbirds and mm -hmm. a memo came out about six weeks ago saying if you're coming back for the season from florida that's how bad florida's been bad really um if you're coming back you need to let us know the day you're arriving so the super can designate an elevator and then sanitize the elevator when you're done and then you to quarantine for two weeks Wow. Yeah. Who knows who's, you know, who knows who's quarantining? You know, if you come in from another state, who's tr really tracking all these people? But in my building, believe me, everybody knows who the snowbirds are. Yeah. And yeah. if they see them down at the pool or walking outside, they're going to get reported. <laughs> wow. Oh. So I think that's what kept people, I know, I can tell that a lot of people are not back yet. I can tell by the terraces that are not, don't have any, any stuff out there yet. And I think part of it was um, the quarantine and, and the fact that the pool wasn't open. So they said, why bother coming back? But now, you know, yeah. our pool's opening next weekend. So yeah, wow. um, that'll be interesting too. Yeah, stay yeah. safe out there, Denise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I am, you know, it's, I'm mostly out of doors in open air, you know, when I'm out, there, you know, as I said, I've gone to a couple of restaurants outside and, um, you know, in the restaurants, everybody's, you know, masked up and gloved and cleaning the tables. And, and one place actually brought the food in a takeout container and you just got to sit there and eat it. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of, uh, all sorts yeah. of things. Going on, so. Christopher said that your, um, the, the restaurant must have looked like a checkerboard game um, with the white and then the it red. Did. It, looked, it looked nice. It, 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 it looked nice. Um, it was a good way to do it. Twelve days instead of fourteen. Oh, oh it's twelve days of quarantine. Is okay. It instead of fourteen, or is it fourteen? I I don't. I think it's fourteen. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's it's usually fourteen. I think. Yeah. yeah. Although now that you say it, I feel like I've heard that twelve somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's twelve days of for um right. incubation period. Mm, I don't. I think I don't I've heard that more as far as incubation period, not so much as far as quarantine. Oh. <laughs> Christopher is saying that sometimes Brian speaks as Christopher and that he loves him. <laughs> I guess it's true if you're both watching from one account. <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. We love Brian too. So there you go. We love Brian too. Yeah. This is the view. <laughs> so one one of these weeks we're gonna start fighting with each other. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need to do that. <laughs> Definitely. We have to think of a really good topic, though. Yeah, right. I know. Something really topics fun. they would like us to argue about. Something controversial. Yeah. <laughs> Next week. Next week. So, all right. Well, <laughs> the twelve days of quarantine. Twelve days of quarantine. On <laughs> the first day of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, I, I will bet you that given what's out there on the internet, somebody has written the 12 days of quarantine yeah. for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Yeah. So. All right, friends. Well, it was good to be with you. Glad to be with my fellow uh, co-hosts on uh, on the, the St. Peter's View. Um, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll fight about something next week. And... Um, yeah, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Have a good one all. Have yeah. a good one. Take care. All right. Bye. I think Denise and Alicia, maybe you guys could stay on. <laughs>